So a few months ago, I went over my workflow for photography using Digicam and Raw Therapy. And in the intervening months, I've learned a bit. And so I kind of wanted to share what I've learned um, to see if that can help improve your workflow with photography. So the first thing I do is I import them here into Digicam. Now the nice thing about Digicam compared to Lightroom and some other um, uh, some other programs that have their own internal library in which you have to import stuff all you have to do is have a set of folders that it's looking at and just add pictures into that folder boom they appear in Digicam which is great afterwards the next thing I like to do um, and I haven't followed my order here and sometimes that can lead to problems is immediately after importing them rename them because otherwise you end up with stupid file names like this one here now um, so what I'm gonna do a batch rename so I just select all of these now there's a bug or at least it's been affecting me where if you have a batch rename that includes a video file it gets stuck and it messes up your batch rename so I'm gonna get rid of all of those okay and I hit F2 and here's the rename dialog. What I really like about this one is that it's really easy to build up a great little, um, great little uh, set of of naming options that will give you unique file names that can have all the data from the metadata that's already in the picture. For example, you can have the camera, you can have the date and time it was taken, you can have all kinds of different metadata. Now. If you look over here, you can see that um, I go year, then month, then camera, then some kind of category. So I don't add the camera to the file name. However, one thing that was really um, giving me a lot of trouble when I was using Lightroom is that Lightroom didn't have all these at the time. I don't know if they've added it recently or if there's a tweak to do it. But I would I would come in and say, all right, these are pictures of, you know, Scarlett and my wife. And it would go and rename them Scarlet and Wife 1, Scarlet and Wife 2, Scarlet and Wife 3. Then I'd put those into a folder. Then I'd add some more pictures for that month of Scarlet and my wife. And I'd put those in. And now when I try to transfer them over, there'd be a conflict. So I'd have to create all kinds of weird file names that didn't really uh, appeal to me. So I, what I've done here is I've added the date that the picture was taken. And that's basically going to save me um, because... You know, no two pictures are going to have the same date and the same thing. Now, there's, you know, I could probably add time if I wanted to really be careful about it. But the way that I work, I'm not going to be adding pictures, naming them, and then adding pictures again. So these pictures here are from the snow day that we had. So I'm going to put um, Feb uh, Snowmageddon because we had more snow that we could handle for this region. So for example, those video files, I already tagged them. If I change them in um, Dolphin, that's going to be bad because then um, it's going to lose that XMP file and it's going to lose the metadata associated with it. So you want to um, rename stuff in here whenever possible. Uh, with pictures, especially if they have the metadata written to them, that's less of an issue. But you, you normally want to do it in here because you got more, you have more flexibility. Um, Dolphin, the file manager in KDE, will allow you to do batch renaming but not pulling all that metadata, at least not as far as I know. So. Um, it's almost done, so I'm not going to pause the video here. Um, but the next thing that I like to do is add tags. And I always like to do that before I start moving stuff around because otherwise I might forget. And so I've already done that here, um, as you can see. But I'll, I'll quickly demonstrate a couple little tweaks that I've found with Digicam as soon as it's done. A little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. There we go. All right. So here's a picture of my daughter uh, from the snow day. And you click here on captions and tags. You can add a caption and title here. 
Um, I don't really bother with that too much unless I'm going to upload it to some kind of service that can pull that like Flickr. But here on tags, so here's all the tags I have. So a couple little tweaks that I found that are pretty cool uh, is that one, you can click here. This will show you what it's already tagged with. Um, that's really, really useful if you want to pick a picture that already has tags and a picture that doesn't have it. And then these will have like a half box selected. And then when you click on the box and then hit apply, it'll give it to everything. And one other thing I do like to add are my my rights information. Um, that's a little bit less important since I'm not uploading stuff to um, Flickr as much as I used to. But it is nice for people to have the copyright information if they want it. Now, uh, something I discovered recently that's really helpful is when you go here, these are your most recent tags. Um, so uh, Lightroom had some like a, a little box up here. And I was just thinking, how could Digicam not have it? This is so annoying. And you know, I was able to discover that it does actually have it right there. And that's really cool. So, so you do that, you tag all your files. Now, um, the next step, uh, which I'm not going to make you watch because it's time a little time consuming. I'll just fast forward is I, I go through all my files looking at them at this size or if necessary if I need to compare some some files I'll do ooh, I see um, so I might want to see this one versus this one um, so I might use this mode Unfortunately, they don't have the mode that uh, that Lightroom does, where you can see a bunch of them at once and kind of look at a, a bunch of similar pictures at the exact same time. Um, but that's okay; it's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, so I'll do that, and I'll add a star to any pictures, and uh, so you know, like so. And if I add a star, that means it's a picture I'm considering processing to make a JPEG so I can share it with people. Um, and so um, sometimes I go a couple passes so if I have a bunch of pictures of the same thing say if I did a photo shoot I don't want to you know upload a hundred pictures that are slight variations on a picture of me and so I might go until I get to five stars and only the five star images are the ones that I'll process to raw therapy so uh, we'll continue um, after I've tagged all these so um, I'll see you in just a second so now I've added stars to the pictures that I wish to um, process you can see here you know I'm pretty typical uh, normally for snapshots especially you're not gonna have a lot of the pictures that you want to keep now one of the big differences here compared to um, Lightroom is that Lightroom saves the um, data about what you do to the raw file within the raw file um, at least if it's a DNG if it's a, a CR2 or some other raw file it will save it as an XMP file which means you have to take care of two different files to make sure you keep all the changes you've made to develop your photo now raw therapy um, has chosen the most um, correct route which is that all raw files regardless of whether they're DNG or Canon or Nikon they will all get a .pp3 file which will describe how to change all the settings to get back to the picture that you took so the um, the most important thing about that is that it has a file name that's the same as the file name for your pictures which is one of the reasons why you want to make sure you name your pictures before you go any further because if you change the name of your picture now you have to find the pp3 file and change that file otherwise you're gonna lose all the changes you made additionally because um, raw therapy is outside of digicam Digicam does not know to move PP3 files along with the raw files they're associated with. So when you put all that together, what that says is if you want the least amount of headaches, what you need to do is have all the pictures where they're going to be in their final, um, their final folder and do your editing there. 
Whereas what I used to do in Lightroom is I would take all the pictures that were, um, you know, whatever star rating I had chosen would be my limit, work on those, and then I would create um, JPEGs of those, and then in the end I would move everything over. Um, alternatively, you could move over everything that's not the star that you want to, um, the star rating you want to look at, um, and then work on whatever's in this folder and then move it over. Neither of those is what you want to do with raw therapy. So um, here's what I consider to be the best workflow at the moment. So what I'm going to do, and I could easily do this with a filter. Um, so in fact, let's do a filter. Let's turn on. Let's see. Um, what? So, so right now it has greater than or equal to zero. So if I put equal zero, here are all the files that I did not choose. So, um, you know, if, I, if the video files I want to do something with in Caden Live, so if I didn't have those, I could have just done control A to do an easy select all. So now I've got all the pictures selected and I'm going to put them in the snow day folder. That's just going to um, take a second. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. Um, today I um, ha had some stuff running on my system, so it took a little bit, but that's okay. They're all over there. So now I'm going to change this back to greater than or equal, which is equivalent to having no active filter. I could have also clicked on the trash can. So now I only have the pictures I want to work on in this folder. So now on my second screen, I'll bring it over here so you can see my second screen of raw therapy. Now this folder only contains the pictures that I want to work on. Raw Therapy does not see the star ratings from Digicam, but that's okay because I now know these are all the pictures I want to keep. So I'm going to select them all. I'm going to give them all a one star rating. And did that work? Let's see. Do that again. Shift one. Okay, so they'll have a one star rating. So the first time it didn't work, that's okay. So now that I know these all have a one star rating, I should be able to move them over. And once they're in the folder with everything else where I need them to be in order for the, um, in order to keep the PB3 files together, and then I'll be able to easily select them in raw therapy. Let's, let's verify that this actually works. So now um, I'll take everything that's at least one star minus this mp4 and I'll copy this into snow day okay and give that a second to run again my computer is running well it might be because I'm doing the, the screencast that might be helping so if you go here here they are so now I'm gonna go to raw therapy bring it back over to the screen okay and I'm going to go to the snow day folder now I'm going to say, only show me one star images, and now I don't see anything. So there may be there may be a hole in my my theory here. So I'm going to in, in a different window. I'm going to go over quickly to where I have my photos. Ah, so I see that my my theory for PP3 files does not work quite as well as I wanted it to because it created PP3 files for all of them to hold the one star ratings. Fine, fair enough. So it didn't work as well as I wanted it to. Um, but now I'll just at least for this particular thing, I'll just do a quick move. Move everything that's a PP3 file into the snow day folder. I'm going to try reloading it. And there's my pictures. So uh, it's certainly 
um, it's it's not as perfect as I had hoped for, um, but um, given if you're careful about it, if every time you do this you move over the PP3 files immediately, then it should be easy. Just move star.pp3 and you're good and you're still getting all the benefits. So for now, I'm going to say that this is going to be my strategy until I figure out something that works a little better. Um, or if there's some kind of way to make raw therapy read the star values from Digicam. All right. So um, now my next step is to um, process the files. And what I want to do is, um, so I'll, I'll start with this one as an example. I'm not going to go through all of these. Again, that would make a boring video. Um, but um, what I want to do is I don't want to save these, right? Because that takes a lot longer. I just want to hit Q for each of them. And they're going to go in the queue. And then I'm going to save them to where they started from slash JPEG. And so all the JPEGs will be on the side. Now, um, uh, I'll, I'll get back to this um, after I come back to the video. But the one real bummer with raw therapy is that they're when they create the JPEG, they're not following the um, XMP spec as carefully as they should be. And so the tags are getting put in the wrong place. EXIV2, EXIV2, is used for metadata in Digicam, and EXIV2 follows the spec exactly. So it does not see the tags, and I have to add them back in. Now, I filed a bug. There's a bug filed with each of the two open source programs. And there is a possibility that EXIV may change things to say, OK, this is not the spec, but we will, we will allow people who use a program that doesn't follow the spec perfectly to, um, uh, to, to be able to still get metadata out. We'll see. So I will see you um, after I'm done processing right, these images. So now I'm back. And so here were the original. So I, oh, I've set this filter to the star. Here are the photos that I wanted to edit. And here are the JPEGs that were created within um, raw therapy. And some of these I went for pretty straightforward. And some of them I went for a little different looking thing. Um, but I did discover something that makes it perfectly fine to have it go into the JPEG folder even though um, even though I'm going to need to add the tags back in. You see these are all missing their tags. <coughs> so first of all, let's um, first of all, I don't know why that happened there. Um, let's do this. We go up here to Snow Day and we go to View and then go include album subtree. So now you see the picture from the album and the picture from the um, the folder below. So that's cool because now I can highlight here and here. Now, this would be a little more annoying if you had lots and lots and lots of pictures and there may be some ways around it maybe to get rid of this and this and just make them appear together. But for this, it works perfectly fine. So I go there, now I go here and you see here, I just click there and there. And one more thing that gets erased from raw therapy is the information. So I bring that back, hit apply, and boom, it's taken care of. So that's not so bad. So uh, first of all, let me just do this right away. And um, you know, when it does this, at least for Digicam 4, it's gonna, you see they're gonna kind of disappear and reappear, and that's what's writing the information. In Digicam 5, they're adding an option so you can have that take place a little bit later so it doesn't um, prevent you from continuing your work. But anyway, I know that these all have uh, the same tags. So I'll just click here, here, and here. And I'll go boom, boom. Hit apply. All right. This one just has snow. I could very easily just go to it and type snow, but um, that's fine. So just go there. And now um, 
all of these, I'm pretty sure, are all, uh, oops, all tagged in the same way. So if I go there, 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 and then the last one has a different tag. So I can click here, and then all the, oops, here, 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 and here. These are all going to get the same tags. All right. And then this one gets a snow tag again. So just go boom, boom. And there you go. So now you have your tags again. So you can find your pictures. Um, you can, you know, these tags will be read by um, Flickr and allow you to not have to enter your tags over there. So that's good. So um, now for many people, you'd be done. You can share these JPEGs with others and um, or if you happen to be a professional share them with your clients there's a problem though the JPEGs produced from my camera which is the Rebel um, T6S are 20 to 30 megabytes in size um, now you know I if, if I'm gonna be creating you know um, JPEGs if I'm shooting raw I'm not gonna pick a JPEG compression that's gonna reduce the quality because then why the F did I shoot in RAW to begin with, right? Um, but there's a problem. These pictures, uh, these files are so large that uh, WordPress has a problem with them. Uh, WordPress, first of all, when you try to upload, it just errors out. And even if I change my PHP INI file, it still errors out. And that's no good. So I got this other plugin that'll chop up files into little bits, upload them, put it back together. When I did that, my files, my, my images looked like garbage. Um, I've, I've seen this with uh, some of the images that I shot for Comic Con, and I've seen this with some of the personal images I've put up. So there's a very easy solution because the pictures that I put up on my blog are not the same pictures I would send to um, my local um, printing place here would be Costco to print out images to put up on my wall or to put up in my office at work the pictures on my blog are just for people to look and see mostly family and friends and um, they, they get in, my blog gets imported into um, Facebook so my family and friends that uh, can't be bothered to uh, type in my URL can see it in there and 99.9% .9 of them are gonna look at it probably on their phone and say cool maybe hit like maybe make a comment and that's it my mom and my mother-in-law are the only people that would want to print a file the only people that would want the full data from these 30 megabyte files so I have one more step, and that step is to use Digicam to create a bunch of um, reduced um, reduced resolution files. So I used to do this in raw therapy. I would save the file, then I would save it again uh, with a for blog um, suffix, and um, and you could add some extra sharpening and stuff like that as you change the f the file size if I were doing this professionally that's probably what I would still want to be doing because like I said it lets you control if you're gonna add any sharpening and how much sharpening you're gonna add but because raw therapy always wants to open up your file with the last way you saved it you're gonna have to remember later when you come back to the file mm -hmm. that you're gonna have to undo the resizing or whatever you do to your file is going to come out to as a smaller size because your your .pp3 so there's extra .pp3s that have to do with each JPEG you create so you can say oh this is the one I used to get a small one a big one black and white color whatever but the main one the one that's used when you open it up is going to have this resize so I select all my JPEGs all right and I go to tool oh batch queue uh, batch queue manager here we go. So I have all my um, all my images here, and you can choose to rename them and do all kinds of stuff like that. So the target, I want to uncheck use original album, 
and I want to say save these to a new folder and this folder is called for blog. You can call it for web or anything else for resize. And the reason I separate it is so that later when I go to my blog, I don't have to like use control and click to select only the ones that are for the blog. I can just control A, put them all over. Okay. So here's all the things that they offer. So I just take resize, put it there. Boom. What do I want to resize it to? And I can pick how many pixels I want. Now for my blog, now what I really should do is pick huge because huge is still about a fourth of the size of my images and it means if someone happens to look at it on a big computer screen and you know they can see better quality and blah 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 blah. but for my current blog theme and for the fact that most people are going to look at this on an iPad or a cell phone I don't need to be that big so I just click on big right here and um, that's going to look at the longest side and make it 1024 pixels and the other one will be what it needs to be so I hit run it goes big boom 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 picture by picture very quickly runs all done tells me that it's done click X again my computer's running a little slowly today possibly um, related to the fact that uh, I'm recording the screen as well. That's okay. I don't have to actually exit out of that. So I go to for blog. And there they are. And you see these are only 135 kilobytes. Quite a difference, right? Still looks nice. Still, you know, gets across what I want to get across. But at much, much smaller file size. And so um, that's my current uh, workflow. And if I discover any new um, things that I want to do, I'll update it again. Thank you for watching. And thanks for uh, taking a look and see what my, uh, my workflow is with Digicam and Raw Therapy.